there are several threats and obstacles to freedom in the practice of computing. One of them is mobile devices. There is no mobile device that I know of that can run entirely free software. There are a couple of Android phones that can come pretty close. There's a free version of Android called Replicant, which can be installed in a couple of devices. And that leaves only a little proprietary software. Unfortunately, we suspect that that little proprietary software, which is the program that talks over the radio to the telephone network, has a back door that allows it to write over all the rest of the system, which means that that one little piece is a tremendous vulnerability. Now, almost all portable phones have a back door that allows some company to remotely install software changes, and these back doors have been used to convert portable phones into listening devices. The book Murder in Samarkand by Craig Murray describes one such uh, case that he was involved in. He was the British ambassador to Uzbekistan, I think, at the time, which is how he knew that this was being done. But it could be done to you. Uh, this is this together with the tracking of people's movements are the reasons why I do not have a mobile phone. Mobile phones are Stalin's dream. And I feel it's my duty not to have one. It's not that I think that, there, that Big Brother is particularly interested in tracking me or that my movements are particularly secret. It's that I feel everyone should refuse to carry a portable surveillance and tracking device, no matter how convenient it might be. Well, I can't tell you what to do. I can't tell me what to do. And this is what I do. But, <clears throat> so you can see though that this problem is related to the fact that the software is not free. If it were all free software, we could get rid of the back door and we could to some extent reduce the tracking. That is, we could turn off the ability to remotely track it with GPS. We, that would not eliminate the ability to remotely track the phone because it can also be done just by comparing the time of arrival of signals at various towers. And every year they get a little better at tracking the phones that way. So if you really don't want to be tracked everywhere you go, and let Big Brother know all this because that information also is totally available to the FBI, and I suspect the FBI collects it all. We have the word of some senators which say that if we knew how much information the FBI was collecting, we would be angry, but they're not allowed to tell us. So we have to assume the worst. So, uh, if you wanted to stop it from tracking you, you'd need to find some kind of directional antenna that you would point at a particular tower from time to time, and thus they wouldn't be able to triangulate you if the signal didn't arrive at other towers strongly enough for them to take any note of it. Maybe this way you couldn't be tracked. Would be easy enough to check. There are phones that like some Android devices, I think maybe all will tell you where you are based on uh, what the phone's system can figure out. And if that works, then you know that it can tell where you are. So this is one big problem. It relates to another big problem, which is peripherals whose controls are secret. Now, what, what do I mean by that? I don't know a very good way to say it in English, unfortunately. Uh, the point is every peripheral that goes in a computer, well, there's a way for the computer to give it commands and tell it what to do. The problem is nowadays, often those commands are secret. 
So the manufacturer will sell you the peripheral, but will not tell you how to use it, which I find shocking and scandalous. Instead of telling you how to use the peripheral, they offer you a non-free program to run the peripheral. So this program implements the commands that are secret. And what's inside that program is secret. That means you can't trust it. And that means we don't know how to write a free program to do the job because a free program would have to send the right commands. So before we could write the free program, we have to figure out what the commands are. That job is called reverse engineering and it's hard, which is why it's a big obstacle. So <clears throat> we are begging people to please do reverse engineering and figure out how to run these peripherals. And nowadays, almost all mobile devices come with graphics accelerators and their commands are secret and there's a program that has to get loaded into the thing and that program is secret. It's called firmware. It's non-free and it's, we can't replace it with free software because we don't know the specs of the thing. <clears throat> so what we see is that the, this is the main reason why free, we can't replace the free software in mobile devices. So this is a big problem and I keep looking for some way around it. And I hope we'll find one one of these days. The other big threat, well, another big threat is computing patents. Patents on ideas that can be implemented by programs. And this is getting to be such a big mess that it's becoming a real public issue. And yet, the European Parliament just voted for an agreement to redesign Europe's patent system in such a way that it gives the European Patent Office almost total autonomy over questions such as what kinds of patents are allowed. And we know the European Patent Office wants software idea patents. And so Europe just decided to uh, jump into the same pit that the US is, is concerned about being stuck in. What can you do? We tried hard, but they, they buried the issue so deep that most politicians couldn't be made to face it. Another problem comes from the tendency of people to depend on remote servers, leaving their data in remote servers, which means Big Brother can collect it without a warrant, and depending for their computing itself on those servers, which means that the server controls the user's computing and the user can't possibly control it.